current market condition is yet to prove a specific direction for both Ethereum and Bitcoin. Of course, right now, for watching this video, you saw that yesterday, today is the time of recording, Bitcoin and Ethereum had a huge rally, over 3.5% for Bitcoin and around 3-ish percent for Ethereum as well. So these two tokens, they performed very, very well yesterday, today, as a time of recording. But what matters is that both don't have a good pattern on either way. So on the short term, I'm not talking long term. Of course, we're bullish for the long term, but short term, you see uh, a lot of people saying two different things. So some people are, of course, going to say, hey, I drew this squiggly line right here and Bitcoin is going to go up. The other one says, well, but now that pattern formed and this means that we're going to go down. So what we can say is that we have liquidation values for the top and the bottom. So for short positions and for long positions, these I'm going to show that to you in a little bit. But for Bitcoin, we are just waiting for the CPI data. And meanwhile, everyone is waiting for the CPI data. We see that options markets are starting to ramp up. Open interests are starting to ramp up. Um, volatility also for Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum is starting to go up which is good for us traders. The premium is going to be juicier. So let's go through some news. Let's go through the charts, through the um, Ethereum and Bitcoin charts. Um, we're going to go through the liquidation, the heat map as well as we like to do. And that is also good data for uh, you to uh, take your positions, open your positions. So yeah, let's get right into it. So regarding crypto. Uh, last week, we saw Bitcoin going all the way to the 53,000. And a few traders asked us to compare to what happened on the other side with stocks. We can see here from uh, Bloomberg that we had a $4 trillion wipeout, not billions, trillion dollars wipeout. This is from global stocks. So the world last week suddenly had four trillion dollars less money available, mainly because they were wiped out from the face of the earth. So that was the first time since December 2022. So we're going back to uh, end of pandemic days worldwide. That being said, that also affected crypto, as we remember last week we saw, but not as much as, for example, August 5, where we had a huge drop from uh, low 60s to low 50s. So we are proud that we held on strong. Meanwhile, the stock market and everything else the global markets were shutting down like losing four trillion dollars so that being said it is not just roses and sunshine here for crypto uh either because we look at uncertainties for both sides we are not very bullish neither very bearish we don't have any specific uh thing that we know for sure is going to happen in the short term of course there's only one thing that we know for sure is that october for the halving tends to be a very very good month another thing that i want to show you right here is a suite from racked capital which shows us that every halving we usually have october november december as a green quarter so this is amazing news for us again we believe that the halving does come with historical data to prove that after the halving, there's always a period where um, 180 days, more or less, maybe a little more after the halving, we see huge spikes in price, which I am part of those that believe that this will happen again. History does not repeat itself, but it rhymes. This is uh, what I'm personally waiting for for um, Bitcoin and mainly because of the halving. Again, I'm going to show you another cycle, another halving cycle for you to see. We can see that the October breakout is always there after the halving. Uh, we had it on the second halving, the third halving and the fourth halving. And we're expecting that to be happening in the fourth halving as well. So again, I'm hopeful. Uh, I would like to see that happening again, mainly because it did in the last two. So I do believe that things are going to be similar, maybe not as much uh, of an extension uh, percentage wise, but still we don't need it to go as high as it did on the others because we have options and we can profit with options because options do offer that uh, leverage if you think about it uh, compared to just holding the asset. So we can make way more money just by predicting the upside and taking that in consideration. That being said, as I said, not everything is uh, sunshine and flowers. Now we can look at this image right here, which a lot of people are using to describe that we're going to see 54,000 again very, very soon before we see 60,000 one more time. So another one that shares the same feeling is this one right here. We have another dip before the 100K. So this image right here shows that we should be looking at the 51-ish, 53-ish to 
100k as a bottom before going to 100k we just don't know when that's going to be again meanwhile ethereum doesn't have anything new happening ethereum is the lead for DeFi, so everything usually DeFi news they come with ethereum news and a huge DeFi news is that a lot of people are just bored and waiting for something to happen uh, not necessarily new stack not necessarily new tech that or updates that's going to happen no mainly everyone is just too afraid to do anything other than farming airdrops or staking because they don't know where the market's going to go. They don't have a sentiment that is either way. So they just rather keep it safe, keep it cool and wait for uh, a huge confirmation to either side to take their bets on. That being said, let's go for uh, what's important, which are the numbers. So Bitcoin right now is at 57,558 and Ethereum is at 2389 a lot has changed from the last video um but we can see right here this is my opinion honestly that we are top heavy right now so for ethereum and bitcoin uh, i think we're top heavy especially for ethereum which is trying to see if it's gonna stay above this um green line right here which was the support the ceiling that i told you on the last video and you can see by the volume it is still trying to decide where is it gonna go uh what is it gonna be doing uh same for bitcoin we're seeing that very very close to the uh ema right here this white line the moving average uh, and we're still waiting for it to decide that this is the top it wants to go a little bit more above um, so we would have to wait and see something that we can look at is the liquidation heat map um, this one right here so what we can see from the liquidation heat map is that we have a lot of volume for it to be liquidated at the bottom right here at 56 ish 56 and a half and at the top, we don't have that much uh, liquidation leverage, meaning that even if it strikes this price right here, it won't create as much buying pressure or just a snowball effect to the upside as it would if it touches below. So usually these heat maps right here shows us the kind of like a magnet of where Bitcoin is going to be attracted to. And you can see that usually it touches the part that has a lot of heat, a lot of uh, yellow right here or orange, whatever color that heat map shows sometimes. So my honest opinion is that we're not going to be looking at uh, over 58,000 for Bitcoin. We're going to be waiting for the 56,000 sooner than later. So this is a good thing for us to know, which is maybe is better for us to sell calls this week uh, or to sell calls today in my case because i do zero dt or even if you want to do weeklies maybe it's better to go and sell a call based on this right here and if we look at the uh history for liquidations in the past 24 hours we have right here bitcoin in the last 24 hours liquidated 30 million dollars in short positions in overall positions but 20 million of those were short positions overall in the last 24 hours 74 Point eighty eight million dollars got liquidated and 50 million of those were short positions. So people thinking that we were going to go down and instead we went up. So Everton, what does it mean? Well, it means, honestly, my opinion is that for uh, this trade that we do right here, we can be looking at selling calls. So again, as you might be uh, accustomed right now, I'm going to take a few minutes to look at each individual price and strike and premium and see which one makes sense. And then we're going to be back here in a minute. So here is the time lapse real quick. All right, so uh, for Ethereum and for Bitcoin, I already picked up um, what I'm gonna be doing for both. And for, let's start with Ethereum, which is the last one that I just did. We're gonna sell a 24.50 um, for tomorrow. So right now it is 9 p.m. as the time of recording, and these options expired at 5 a.m. my time. So 5 a.m. Uh, on Wednesday the 11th, this is when we're gonna expire. So for this one, it's gonna be looking at around 0.8%, which is fantastic for such uh, a trade. So I'm gonna sell this one real quick. And yes, the, the request was processed. So now we go for Bitcoin and for Bitcoin, we're gonna go for the 59. We're going to sell a call at 59,000. This will give us 0.72%. We're going to go open this request process fully. So you can see at the bottom, we have both of them there. So let's mark those on the graphs so we can visualize those more. All right. So we have marked right here the green line. It starts at the time we sold the option. Let me go back to the four hour on both so you can visualize better. So this is the span, the lifespan of the option itself. 
it will go until 5 a.m. Now it says 4 because I'm in the 4 hours chart. But if we go to the 1 hour, it will say 5 a.m. Right here, you can see that at the bottom. Yes, you can. So we have 8 hours to go and two and a half, almost 2.5% uh, to go on the upside to reach our option and make us lose money. Uh, and for Ethereum, we have 8 hours to go and 2.5% again on the upside before we start losing money. So I honestly think these two are good options and we're going to be collecting 12 and a half bucks for this. So everything above 10 is good for me in premiums because if I sell that every day, we're going to make over 300 bucks in passive income that then we can reinvest and next month we're going to have now a bigger capital to allocate and do more tradings. So this is the strategy for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I usually try to stay between 0.4 and 0.5 but when we have high IV like we do right now and we have more information, we take a little bit more risk, of course, because this is the strategy account that I try to be more flexible, try to make more content for you guys instead of just trading once every week or once every month. I would like to show you how to trade, how to do that on the topics and to incentivize you to do so as well, to trade responsibly. So. If you want to check it out, Bitopics is the first link in the description. We don't need your KYC. You just go put your email, confirm your email and start trading. So thank you so much. Happy Wednesday. And we'll see you guys on Friday for another video. Peace out.